Hi, I'm Frank the Pest Geek, host of the Pest Geek Podcast, and welcome to the Pest Geek Academy. This is your first lesson in co titled Customer Wow, how to create a memorable experience for your customers. All right now, as a pest control professional, people are trusting you to protect them, protect them, their family, their pets, okay, their property, their plants, and even protect the planet from pests by using responsible pesticide use. And this is what we're going to be discussing is how do you deal with the customer service issues in creating a customer experience, okay? Now, you are the face of the brand. People see you, the technician, as the face of the brand. You represent that brand wherever you go. When you're in that vehicle, okay, when you're in uniform, no matter where you are, you are a branding machine and you are the one people see, all right? So let's talk about dealing with pest control as a people business, okay? Pest control is a people business. It's not about pests. It's not about product. It's not about pesticides. It's really about the people. We are killing the pests, but we're serving the people, okay? And we forget this as technicians, People who are technically minded think that the technical work is the most important part. That is a given as a pest control professional. This is what people are hiring to do. What they really want is a good customer service experience. Now, I want you to realize this for a minute, that a third of people are afraid of insects. About 25% of people are afraid of spiders, arachnophobia. OK, so when people are calling you, it's usually out of fear that something is going to cause damage to them, damage to their property, damage to their pet or damage to their plants. And what they want to do is have peace of mind that this is being dealt with. And as the pest control professional, it is your job to create that peace of mind when you're dealing with the client. Like I said, we work with people. We don't really work with the pest. Our job is to kill the pest, solve the pest problem, okay? We're dealing most of the time with people, about 50% or less, we're dealing with an actual pest problem. Most of the issues that arise in customer service have nothing to do with the pest control or the capability of the technician to control the pest, but they're other issues that arise, and this is why we want to deal with this. Now, as a pest control professional, you have to have three top skills to deal with this, and one of those is social skills, okay? Social skills are what are considered to be the soft skills, your bedside manner, okay? How good are you dealing with people, Okay, the second most important skill is your communication skills. How well you communicate with everybody in your organization and your customer. Okay, and the third is how responsive are you when a problem does arise or when you get communicated by the customer or by your company? Because you have to deal with all of these issues as a pest control technician. Let's tackle the first one, social skills. All right, so in social skills, there are some things that are a given, but that are not always learned or they have to be learned because they're not just natural. How to be courteous, okay? How to acknowledge people and how to be polite, okay? Those are things that we have to deal with as customer service technicians. Being courteous, acknowledge people and being polite are pillars of the customer experience. Okay, let's talk about being courteous and communicating and having social skills. Making eye contact is vital. I know this has to be learned. It is not comfortable for a lot of people, especially technicians. Why? 
Technicians tend to be more in the middle or more introverted. Very few technicians are actually extroverted. So making eye contact is difficult for a lot of people. But if you master this skill, you will be an excellent communicator because your job is to communicate. You're communicating all the time. You're communicating with your words. You're communicating with your body language, with your attitude. So communication and having social skills is about getting along with people and learning how to get along with them. And you have to get along with them in a way that they want to get along with. Smiling is very vitally important to communication. The person is having a bad day. The person is feeling upset. The first, the person is nervous. By you smiling, you take a lot of the edge off. You can communicate a lot of truths where you have to tell the, the customer something difficult. But if you have a smile on your face, and I don't mean smiling like a clown, I mean a genuine smile where you can say things and understand that you are not stressed about the situation. You're comfortable. You're in control. Okay, so these are things that are social skills that are going to help you. Shaking someone's hand. I know that pest control technicians or pretty much all technical people, for the most part, tend to be a little crabby. They don't like to engage a lot. They don't like to be very touchy-feely. But a simple handshake when you're walking into the home makes a huge difference in your interaction with them. So remember, eye contact, smile, shake people's hands. All right. So now we're talking about courtesy. And remember, I talked to you about being courteous. Things like may I, please, and thank you are going to go an extremely long way because very few people are courteous anymore. Understand that your chances are that maybe you're a millennial or maybe you're an I Jenner and you're dealing with people of older generations in their home. You're on their property. You're in their home. There, there has to be a certain amount of respect for their home and for their environment. So when you're going to move something, you're going to go into a room, may I, can you please do this for me? Can you please, maybe they have to move something where you don't feel comfortable moving something for them. Can you please do it? And thank you. Thank him for doing business with you. Thank them for collaborating. Thank them for, you know, being a great customer. Saying, may I please and thank you is going to go a huge way for you. All right. Now, in uh, when you get to the home, you need to knock. Here's why. I'm going to go back a little bit. You get to the home and maybe you're doing a lawn service or you're doing an exterior or you're doing an inspection. The customer is not necessarily need to be home all the time. Sometimes they won't be home when you're doing the service. And you don't knock on the door, but maybe they're in the backyard. Maybe their kids are in the pool. And it's rude to walk onto somebody's property without permission. Even though they've granted you permission to the service, it is about being courteous and considerate. Knock on their door. Why? Because people may have cameras. They will have a, a, a doorbell that is hooked up to their phone and they can see you on the door. So even if they're not home, you can acknowledge them and saying, hey, I'm here to do the service. Just thought I'll let you know. So knocking on the door before you walk on the property and do anything is important to be respectable, uh, respectful and courteous. Now, there's times where you have to use the hose. You have to use the water for something. Put things back the way you found them. If I've heard complaints over a decade, is the technician used the hose and didn't put it back. You see, things like that go a long way. Remember, you're on their property. You're using their stuff. Ask for permission. May I use your hose? Can I please use your hose? Thank you for letting me use your hose. You know, you might just need a gallon. You might need to, you know, in some parts of the country, water is expensive. So people might not want you to use their hose. A lot of companies give you tanks. 
but you're down to the last stop. You're doing them a favor by stopping in at the end of the day. Maybe you ran out of water. Situations happen, but just understand that that consideration is going to go a long way. Gates, leaving gates open. When you leave a gate open, a pet can leave. A child can get out. God forbid that the pet leaves the home and gets lost or the pet worse gets killed by a vehicle because you were negligent. Remember, always double check behind you when you're going into a property and when you're coming out to lock the gates. As a matter of fact, when you're going in and out of a home, always close the door behind you. If it are mosquitoes or they're flies or they got the air conditioning, you're letting all that out and you're being inconsiderate. Closing doors and gates is a major concern and it's always a major complaint that the technician came and left the gate open. Think about this for a minute. The gate might not be working properly and you closed it and it stayed open. Make sure that it is locked. Okay, so now cleanliness and cleaning up after yourself. When you're in someone's home, you may need to drill a hole. You may need to move things and you may need to, you know, afterwards you left some granular bait behind or something. Clean up after yourself. The client may tell you, oh, it's okay. I'm going to clean when you're done. Do it anyway. All right. Having consideration for people's property, like putting on shoe covers is vitally important to keep their property clean. I mean, you're walking in yards where you can step on stuff. There's pesticide on your shoes. You can't remove the shoes when you're in the home treating because the label says that you must wear shoes and socks when you're applying it, okay? So understand that you're protecting their property. You're, you're taking consideration from them to cover up, protect their property. If you're putting something on their counters, make sure you have a little mat or that you use something like paper or tissue or something to protect those counters. People don't like pesticide cans being put on their counter equipment because they don't know where it's been. They'll ask you, well, please don't put that on my counter because I don't know where that can has been. People are protective of their property, of the things. They don't want contamination in their home, okay? So put it back where you found it. Whatever it is, if you're moving plates or you're moving stuff for them, be considerate and put things back where you found them, all right? Now let's talk about consideration or communication. Uh, listening is a vital part of communication. We've got two ears and one mouth. Use them appropriately. We tend to sometimes to not want to listen because we already know what we're running into. We already know it's a German roach problem. We already know that it is an ant problem. But the customer wants to feel listened to. And what happens is nobody's listening to them. And this will save you a lot of trouble down the line when the customer, I tried to tell you, but you wouldn't listen to me. So find out in the initial visit, what is the problem? They will tell you where they're seeing the problem. They'll tell you where everything is visible. This is a good indication of where the pest problem is. Okay. When you're listening, you're listening actively. Don't listen passively just so they can feel gratified, but actually listen to them. And a good technique, once they've taken you through the home and they've shown you where the insect problem is and when it happened and how, you know, what was the last time they saw it? This is all vital information you need to determine what you're dealing with. Repeat it back to them. So what you're saying is you've seen roaches in the kitchen, in the bathroom, here, in the garage is a main focus. Okay, I got it. I'm going to do a thorough inspection anyway, just to confirm that there isn't anything anywhere else. May I check around the house? May I check the bedrooms? Thank you. Is there anybody sleeping in the bedrooms? You would not believe the amount of times I walked into a room when they told me nobody was there and actually somebody was sleeping in the room. So remember, you're listening to be uh, responsive you're also trying to engage the customer. A lot of time, remember I said, you know, we're crabby. We don't like to talk to too many people. And 
you need to learn to engage in the conversation because you might be dealing with a customer who is an introvert who is non-communicative with you. And you need to draw out information from that client in order to be able to find out what has been happening. Maybe their child saw it. You know, you have to engage in the conversation. You just don't go in, perform the service, leave, and not engage with the client. Lastly, you need to learn to relate. You need to be relatable. Okay, you need to have what is known as empathy for people. Remember, they're, they're afraid, they're um, worried, they're concerned about the pest, they're concerned about the chemicals, they're concerned about their children, they're concerned. And by you putting yourself in that customer's shoes, you show that you care. So being able to listen, to engage, and relate with the client, it is vital to communication. Responsiveness. If one thing characterizes an entire service industry is non-responsiveness. If you can respond quickly, effectively with people, you will gain enormous amount of respect and trustworthiness for them to trust you in their home. When a customer calls, respond as soon as possible. A rule of thumb is you're usually with a customer, you're usually applying a pesticide, you usually have your hands full. So make it a habit that in every stop, you check your voicemail, you check your emails, you check your texts on every stop and respond before going to the next stop. I know that you're busy. You're going to be busy. Everybody's busy, but nobody expects to wait till the end of the day or the next day to get responded to. Also, you may need to respond to your office. You may need to respond to customer service reps, to salespeople, to managers. Be responsive as soon as possible. Show up. Responsiveness means you show up when you're supposed to show up. You show up when you say you're going to show up. If you want to shine as a, as, a, as a customer service person, as a technician that people love, is show up. When you show up on time, when you show up, you say you're going to be there in a week. You say you're going to be there in a couple of days. Do it. Do it when you say you're going to do it because if people say a lot of things they're going to do and they don't do it. If you can't do it, don't commit to it. And you're better off telling the customer, listen, I can't give you an answer on that right now. I have to check in before I do this. Let me check and I'll get back to you. And then respond, show up, get back to them when you say you will. This will increase your credibility enormously. All right. Remembering that your number one job is customer satisfaction. Understand that killing pests, you may kill all the bugs in the home. And if you're failing in any of this, the customer doesn't feel satisfied because they're not related to bugs, but it's related to how they feel about you and the service they receive. Remember, lifetime value of a client is what's valuable. When you can do something for a client that doesn't cost very much and it increases the value of the service, they're not going to go look around for another company. People are busy. It takes a lot for somebody to get tired and to call another company. Most people are reasonable. Lifetime value, what that customer represents to you over the years in new business, in new revenue, and new referrals, and new everything for you, for your business. Remember, you're managing this business. You're managing this route. If you're getting compensated by the hour, or you're getting compensated salary, or you're getting compensated with, with production plus commission, this can mean a couple of more thousand dollars a year in your pocket by doing this. Customer retention is vital to keeping that customer around as long as possible. Why? Because it costs up to three to 10 times more to replace a customer 
than to do something for them that keeps them satisfied. And most of what can be done can be done at no additional cost in products or going back to that property simply by taking these simple steps. All right. In communication, confirm your appointments. Okay. Confirm your appointments. Why? That appointment was made a week ago. That appointment was made the day before. But things happen. Customer shows up to work and all of a sudden he has a surprise meeting he didn't know anything about. And now he can't leave on time. And you're driving 20, 30, 50 miles to see a customer because you confirmed it the day before. They should have known. Well, it is your responsibility to confirm things even that morning. If you wake up in the morning before you head out on your route, hey, I am on my way to you. Hey, I'm going to be there at noon. Confirm that appointment that day with your client. Call that client when you are on your way. It is appreciated. People, if you give them a window of two to four hours, they're not going to be sitting at home waiting for you. They're busy. They could have gone to the market. So if you're giving them a heads up of 30 minutes to an hour, you let that customer know, hey, I'm going to be there in the next hour or so just to let you know I'm on my way or I'll be there in 15 minutes, whatever you agreed upon, but it is appreciated. Notify people when you're there, even if nobody's home. Software should be able to manage a lot of this for you, but if the customer is not home and you know the home is an issue, hey, by the way, have you been experiencing any problems? Simple text. I'm here at your property. You know, are you having any problems? Because you'll be surprised after you leave, you get the call. Oh, I wish I would have known you were there. I had a problem and I could have told you about it. Sometimes the husband is home. Sometimes the wife is home and they haven't communicated. Sometimes the mother-in-law is home and nobody's told her. Things don't get communicated. Communication is the biggest problem we have in society today that people don't communicate well. And by you doing this and being an excellent communicator, it is not what you say. Sometimes it is the way you say it and what you didn't say that is important. All right. So now we're dealing with if you're running behind, you're going to run behind, especially if you've got 10 stops and that last stop in the day chances are you're going to run behind because you ran behind for traffic. There was weather problems. You had encountered issues in a home that you didn't expect. The customer talked more than usual. You're going to get that. But if you know you're going to be running behind by noon, if you're running behind and you've got an appointment at the end of the day, let that customer know you're running behind. Explain what you found to every client, whether it's written, whether it's in a report, whether it's in person, before you leave that home, if you're in that home, you tell that customer what you found and what the next steps are that you're going to take to resolve the problem. It is not enough that you did it, but you have to explain it to them. And this is a common problem that the tech left, did the job and didn't tell me anything because the tech is assuming he did his job. Explain it to the customer, communicate it to the customer. Following up after a service is priceless. Even if everything has been resolved, if you call that client, you text that client, hey, listen, I was there, I solved your problem, just want to make sure you're happy. This is an excellent opportunity for you to upsell the customer to a new service, something they may need. Hey, by the way, I did, when I was there, I didn't mention that we have a mosquito service. Would you be interested in knowing about that? Or would you do me a favor if you're satisfied? Thank you. Can you give me a referral? I'm going to send you a link. By the way, do you know anybody who would be interested in my service? Family, a friend? Take the opportunity to give great customer service and ask for something in return. Call text, email. It doesn't matter. What matters is which style of communication 
does your customer prefer? I know a lot of time the company says, we don't have some capabilities. But if the customer sends you an email, sends you a text, remember, the more valuable you become to that client, the more you communicate, the more the client trusts you, sometimes the client is not going to call customer service. They're going to call you directly. You are the superstar, you know, technician. So if the customer prefers a call, then call them. If the customer prefers a text, if the customer texts you, respond in kind. And what I tell you respond in kind to, yes, I know about that. No, if it starts to get contentious, you might have to get on that phone. If you have, I do not, I do not recommend that you handle contentious relationships over text or email. You show up in person or you make that phone call. Your company is going to have policy protocol procedures on how to handle this. But if they don't, these are good guidelines. Pick up the phone and call. The customer says, I want to cancel my contract with you. I don't want your service anymore. They're supposed to call the company for that, but they're calling you. This is something that you need to pick up the phone call, find out why. Where did you fail in the situation? Communication is vital, but respond in kind, but understand platforms have limits and you should not abuse those limits. All right. On invoices, you can always communicate on the invoice. Communicating by leaving a door sign. You showed up, you did the service, and you left nothing behind for the customer to know that you were there. Maybe you could not reach them by phone. Maybe you couldn't send them a text. You couldn't call them. A lawn sign lets them know that you service their property. So there's many ways that you can communicate with your clients, okay? Communication skills are vital that you develop them, all right? Notes, notes are so important. I can't overemphasize notes, okay? Notes to your customer and notes to the office staff, especially for customer service. You are the expert on site. Nobody knows what is happening in that property or on that property except you. And unless you document everything that you observe and everything that you see and everything the customer says that could potentially cost you the account or give you the opportunity to give great customer service, when a customer makes a complaint that says, you know, your invoices are always wrong or something is happening with an invoice, making those notes to the office and communicating back to them on how that customer feels so that somebody can follow up on that or the next time that customer calls, somebody knows about it is invaluable. If you don't make notes, everybody's flying blind. Think about this for a second. You're out sick. And you've done that property for a year. And somebody's got to fill in for you. How are they going to know what the problems have been except for the notes you created? Notes you created in a system. Software today handles all of this. Software doesn't, go, doesn't input the data. You need to do that. These are the, the little specifics about every property. You see an ant trail every time you go. That should be documented. So extreme documentation is going to save you and save the account in the long run because now everything has been documented. A manager can know if the customer's calling and saying, your technician showed up and he didn't do anything. Well, he documented that he did this, this, and this on this date and on this time. And it's in the notes. By the way, it's on your invoice. Oh, well, we don't read the invoices, you see. So people are busy. They automatically will default to the least you know, common denominator to the least stressful uh, way of dealing with things. So notes, keeping notes is vital. It will save your job in most cases and save you from getting sued or worse yet, getting fined from the state because somebody says you didn't do something or somebody says you did something when you documented that you didn't do it. So this is, I can't overemphasize notes and documentation in case there ever is a problem. Now, there are going to be conversations you need to avoid. Politics and religion are one of those. But also conversations that are colorful 
or maybe of a personal nature or of personal preferences. Um, many people have views that are different than yours. And even if you're not having a conversation with them, but maybe you're having a conversation with somebody else in that account and that conversation can get turned on you when somebody calls in and says, I want to cancel my service because so-and-so made this comment and I was offended. And people get offended for a lot of reasons today. So you need to make sure that you keep your conversations professional and don't engage in any conversation that is questionable or colorful or of really personal nature. Simply respond to the client. If a client makes a comment or, or decides they want to engage, listen, I understand how you feel. I understand. But our company has a policy against entering into those conversations. And I'm sorry that I can't do it. I hope you can understand and talk about football or talk about something else or keep it professional to the problems that they're experiencing with pests. Okay, so this is going to save you a lot of grief and a lot of problems uh, down the line. So this has been your first lesson uh, at the Pest Geek Academy. It's customer wow. And this is how you create a memorable customer experience for your customers. There's a short quiz below and I will see you in the next class. Have a pistacular day.